Now, earlier this week, it made massive headlines around the world that in Scotland, a convicted double rapist with male genitalia, donning a peroxide blonde wig and pink handbag, was being held in a women's prison and may well have gone on to serve his full sentence there by putting a fox in a hen house. It then came out while the rapist, formerly known as Adam Graham, awaited trial, he was actually enrolled on a beauty course that meant he watched young women strip off for spray tans. One woman who he spray tanned, who is now aware of Graham's crimes, told BBC Scotland, if we said anything she didn't like, she tried to say we were being transphobic. I think that if news outlets like GB News had not made such a massive point of exposing the utter lunacy of allowing male rapists into women's prisons and allowing people to wear femininity essentially like a costume, gaming the justice system and putting female lives at risk, in my opinion, there's no way in hell Sturgeon would have backed down and said this rapist couldn't be kept in a women's prison. But because people like Nicola Sturgeon are now losing the argument, it seems they are resorting to demonising their opponents. From what I can see, the vast majority of the public do not support radical gender politics, they do not support removing safeguards for women, and they think that allowing people to self-identify as whatever gender they like fundamentally goes against common sense, and in some cases could pose serious risks. In this case, I believe Nicola Sturgeon is trying to silence you with labels. Transphobia, homophobic, racist, misogynist. These are big words that have the power to criminalise people, cost them their jobs, their friendship circles, their families, their reputation. These are really powerful words. But she said, there are people who have opposed this bill that cloak themselves in women's rights to make it acceptable. But just as they're transphobic, you'll also find they are deeply misogynist, often homophobic, possibly some of them racist as well. In my opinion, she's doing this so that the ordinary man and woman going about their daily lives who have genuine concerns about this gender politics silence themselves. So they think twice before raising their concerns at the pub or at the school gates or at a dinner party because they're afraid of being labelled one of those criminal characteristics. I think cases like the one of a male rapist with full genitalia being placed into a woman's prison are going to become more common. Questions about gender education in schools are going to be raised more frequently. Concerns about men being in women's spaces are going to grow. Do not let desperate politicians silence and slander you by sticking a label on you. We shouldn't allow anyone to use such words to bully us into silence. Do not let anyone, for that matter, tell you that what you can see with your own eyes, feel in your own gut and know in your own mind isn't true.